Hello, I'm Marcus Giuliano, and I'm here with my buddy Eric Caffaro. How we doing? We're gonna be a little calmer today. This is not our usual beer blog where we get all not excited beer blog. and opinionated. It's not my usual health blog or my truth and menu blog. We're doing an interesting experiment today. We're actually testing from someone else's blog to see if it actually yes. works. Yes. So I'm a big fan of, of Timothy Ferris. He's the guy who wrote the Four Hour Work Week, the Four Hour um, Body, and now he's writing a book called The Four Hour Chef. Okay. So basically, his whole premise is you take shortcuts, and he shows you shortcuts to do in your work and in your in your personal health. And you know the shortcuts aren't a hundred percent, but what he says is you can spend an hour in the gym doing this, get a hundred percent, or you can do fifteen minutes of this and get eighty percent. Right. Most people are going to say, "Well, I'll take the eighty percent because I only have fifteen minutes as opposed to a hundred percent." So we have we have a bottle of William Hill 1996 Reserve Cabernet from Napa, and we're going to do something called hyper decanting. So that's actually fifteen years old. Fifteen years old, and this is a way that he says. If he calls it hyper decanting, where you can actually, you know, this is an older wine. This needs this needs some time out of the bottle. It needs some time to breathe. You want to hand me the decanter? Yeah. So in a typical, typical way that we would normally drink this wine is in a decanter like this. So we take a decanter, and the purpose of the decanter is to air expose it. it to as much air as possible, mm -hmm. right? To aerate it. We have a flat surface. This is actually a ship's decanter. Um, the reason why it's so wide is because on a ship, rocking it wouldn't. Okay. Turn over. So that's what I told a long time ago. Shapes like this are called ship's decanters. A Brit taught me that. I worked for him. Okay. Yeah, because some a, doesn't make them a bad. No, person. no, because some you know some aren't as wide. So really, you want to like really like swirl this. You know, like how we put wine in our glass and we swirl wine in our glass. Get as much air involved. Get as, as much possible. air. You always see a lot of wine people you know swirling and smelling and swirling. That air is supposed to invigorate the wine. Okay. Now there's other devices that you actually pour through like a little nozzle. And it makes it go, and it like I've incorporates seen, seen in. Those okay. Before, yeah. <clears throat> now what Timothy Ferris says is to hyper decant with an immersion blender. Okay. So now one thing I heard I wanted to share with you is not to take the blender and go to the bottom. Not to the bottom. Because then it'll all fly up. Right. So I think we can accurately, you know, just take a. He uses a beaker. I'm using a close enough. <coughs> close enough. And. What does he say in the video? Like 30 seconds? Something like that. It wasn't so, a long time at all, but 30 seconds. So why don't like you that. swirl that, and I'll I'll give this a thing, and let's count. Okay, so basically we're going right on in here. So you're really aerating that I'm one. I'm really, yeah. I mean, there's multiple, multiple bubbles. In yeah. This is a decent bottle of wine, isn't it? If I remember correctly, it was really good, yeah. I actually haven't had it for a few years. So I'm just I'm just really incorporating a ton of air in here. There's a boatload of air. I'm incorporating what I thought was a ton of air before we saw this video. Video with the aerator. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. So now I should pour out two glasses of this one? Yep, pour out two glasses of that one. Well, two tastes, I should say. Yeah. Hyper decant. Pretty cool. Pretty excited about this. All right, so there's our regular. Let's I'll not, be in charge. Let's not mix things up. I don't think we're going to be able to call that the head. Perfect. So, our two front glasses are hyper decanted. So, I don't think you need to swirl that anymore. No, no, I'm just yeah. trying to determine yeah. all the differences. So, what are you tasting first? I'm tasting the non hyper decanted. Me too. I'm tasting the regular decanted. Well, it's definitely not bad. I, I gotta tell you, it smells great. M remarkable. I, I think there's a difference in the nose. I didn't go that far. The first one is definitely a little tight. Definitely, yeah, definitely absolutely. needs a little bit of time, but you could tell that it's going to be a nice, smooth cab. You can tell it's going to be a nice, smooth cab. There's good concentration, but the one thing that on the end, of the end of the nose, I'm getting at, look at that burning of the nose a little bit. You know, the higher alcohol, it needs to mellow out. It needs right. to. I'm not getting that on the hyper decanted. 
So you went right for the hyper? Is that what you tasted first? I tasted this one first. Oh, you already tasted them. I haven't tasted yet. anything yet. Okay. Oh, I tasted both now. You tasted both. Okay. I hope your wife wasn't pureeing garlic with this previous. It would be a shame. I smelled it. It smelled clean. Now, you could honestly say that this tasting it side by side, you would normally say this is two different wines. This one is the non-decanted, or the regular decanted. Which the, the regular decanted is has a stronger flavor to it. It's not as smooth, and it's not as well balanced. And the hyper decanted one is definitely smooth, definitely well balanced. And I just want everyone to know that before we did this, I did not believe this at all. <laughs> that you could use a. There one. is there, a remarkable difference. There is a remarkable there is a, difference. Is, yeah. I would almost say these are different wines. There's a remarkable difference. Wow. Now keep in mind, you normally decant wine for half an hour, an hour, but the premise of of of, of, <clears throat> of Timothy Ferris is to how can you get to the shortest shortcut possible to get as much results. So, yeah, if we left that in there for an hour, two hours. We'd probably, we'd, obviously we'd get more results. I mean, I would say only because I'm an old school guy that I would be more comfortable decanting it for an hour than sticking a blender into it. You're, you're right, I would too. But side by side, there's no denying the difference in this wine and how much better the hyper decanted wine is than the just open decanted wine. The acidity hits you much quicker that's the word I was looking the for. Acidity, acidity. The acidity, the shinishi, it, it you can tell there's complexity and there's depth in here, but you need time for the air to aerate and all exactly that to right. activate. You know when you drink scotch, they call it blooming. A couple drops of couple water drops makes of a water. bloom. We did that at the scotch. You know, it makes a yes. bloom, it brings the lightness up the flavors. That's why somebody will put like one rock in into um, you know. So the printer's bugging out over there, isn't it? I I didn't want to say anything. It's like all of a sudden it's just starting doing stuff. The over whole there. world's coming to it. <laughs> yeah, I keep so. reaching for the hyper decanted one because <laughs> it's just so much smoother. You're absolutely right. So, so normally when we experiment, we usually contradict and oppose other information. But at this time, we're agreeing. Th this with is the this this is absolutely right. Absolutely, absolutely right. On. Yeah. The only thing I would like to do, which obviously we don't have time on this video to do, or we could come back later, is I'd like to try this. I'd like to decant this and try it in an hour. Right. And see our opinion of this an hour later versus the hyper decant. Versus hyper decant, which we can do that. We well, can put this on hold. Not really. Not really. Because the hyper decant that is really going to now breathe for an hour on its own. Right. True. 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 It would be. It we would have had to have two separate bottles. Two bottles. To one that was opened an hour prior, decanted, and then one that was opened and hyper decanted, right then and there. So that's what I would like to do. That's that. That's really you know. Then you can say you know. There's absolutely a hundred percent. There's a difference here. There is guaranteed. There's guaranteed a smoothness in the hyper decanted. Yep, yep. That's. So now somebody needs to come up with an immersion blender for wine, wine only. With a canister in here, with a little thing you can you know, just press a couple buttons, zap it, and pour and it out. it should have a plastic fin, not a metal fin, so there's no metal on it. Well, stainless steel would be the best. It would be? Stainless steel would be the best. Plastic will pick up odors, which is why I smell but this. But I'm saying if you only use good. it for wine, I'm talking about. Only, if you only use it for wine, then... then yeah. Isn't it better to keep the metal out of the wine? Or it's, it's better to keep metal, but stainless steel, stainless steel. You know, okay. stainless steel is not going to really pick up any odors and this and that. Here, I think that this experiment was definitely well proven. Well proven. And I'm a definitely a big believer in hyper decanting. Yes. I would like to taste this regular decanting. Yeah. I'm Marcus Giuliano, Eric Cafaro. Check all my videos out on MarcusG.TV. I'm a chef on a mission. And have a help happy and healthy holiday.